Today's topic is curl, which stands for client URL and is used to transfer data with URLs between networks using different protocols. It is a package that provides both the library called libcurl and the CLI tool called curl. We're going to be focusing on the HTTP protocol in this lesson as well as learn the basics of APIs. Before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up if you're looking forward to it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. PHP supports libcurl and provides access to its functions, but in order to use its functions, it needs to be installed. Now, in most cases, it will probably already be installed in your machine or in your environment. In our case, we're using Docker and an official PHP image, so we have the curl already installed and set up. If you've been following this lesson and you're using the same Docker configuration that I'm using, then you should already have it all set up. If you're using something like XAMPP, it should already have curl installed as well. Now, let's open the terminal and run a basic curl command so we can see how it works. We're going to type in curl s and then the URL we want to make the request to. We hit enter and as you can see it is printing the content of that website or of that URL. So it's making a request to example.com and then it's printing the results. Now let's see the basic example in PHP using curl functions. As you can see, I have the curl controller created here with the single method called index with the route curl. So we'll use this uh, route to test things out with the curl. We first need to initialize a curl session. So we can call curl init to do that. This function returns curl handle object. If we inspect this function, we see that it returns a curl handle object. Prior to PHP 8, it used to return resource, but since PHP 8, now it returns an object of curl handle class. As you can see, we can optionally also pass the URL into this function, which essentially just sets the option for us and uses that URL. Or we can set the option ourselves along with some other options, which brings us to the next part where we configure some options for our curl session. So let's switch back here and we can use curl underscore set opt function to set our options. We need to pass the handle as the first argument, then we need to pass the option as the second argument and the value as the third argument. There are a bunch of constants that we can use to pass in place of options here and the one for URL is called curl opt underscore URL and you can check the documentation for a list of all the options or if you're using ID like PHP storm it will autocomplete when you type in curl opt just like I did and you'll be able to find the option that you want that way and for the third argument we're going to pass in our value which is the URL. Now to make the request we need to execute our curl session and we can call curl exec function to do that and pass the handle into it as an argument. Curl exec function returns true on success or false otherwise, though it can return the result instead of true if a certain option is set which we'll talk about in a minute. Finally, to close the session and free up the resources we can call curl close function. As I mentioned before, prior to PHP 8, curl init was returning a resource, so calling curl close made sense then to free up the resources and close the session. However, since PHP 8, it no longer returns a resource directly, but returns an object instead. And curl handles are closed whenever object is destroyed or whenever there are no more references to that object. So we don't really need to call the curl close here. Let's test this out. Let's open the browser, visit localhost port 8000 slash curl, hit enter. And sure enough, we get the page from example.com website. Now, this is probably not that useful because we're just rendering the same HTML that we got from example.com. What if we want to store the result in a variable instead of it being outputted on the screen directly? We can do that by setting the return transfer option to true. So let's go back to code. We duplicate this and we'll set curl opt return transfer to true. And in this case, when this is set to true, curl exec will return the result instead of printing it on the screen. So we can assign this to a variable like this, and then we can var dump the content. Let's open the browser, refresh the page, 
and sure enough it is still printing the page but it is not printing it directly it is doing a var dump because we can see the number of characters right here in fact instead of doing var dump we can simply do echo string length refresh the page and we get the length of the content also just to note we could set multiple options together instead of setting them one by one we could use a function called curl set option array and pass the handle and pass an array of options here with their values we could get more information about the data transfer or about the request by using a curl get info function and as you can see this function accepts a second optional argument and that argument is just an option that we can pass if we pass that option it will return only the value for that option otherwise it will return an associative array of all options so let's close that let me comment this out let's refresh the page and sure enough it is printing some of the options now let's format this a bit better instead of var dump i'll use printr and we'll echo a pre-tag let's refresh the page and as you can see we have the url we have content type we have http code the header size request size and so on in case there are errors we can use curl underscore error function to get the last error for the current session so we could do something like if error equals curl error then do something otherwise we could do something else and so on all right so now we know the basics of curl let's now talk a little bit about apis so what is an api api stands for application programming interface and is basically a way for multiple programs or devices to communicate with each other when you go on amazon.com for example and make a purchase a lot of things happen behind the scenes even though you only click one or two buttons it probably communicates with a few services behind the scenes to place that order maybe there is a shipping service the billing service and so on you can place that order from a mobile device, a desktop, an iPad, and so on. APIs make it easier to communicate between those multiple services, devices, and software. Think of an API as a messenger that takes the request, delivers it to the destination, like to some kind of service, tells that service or software what to do, then it takes the response that's generated by that service and brings it back. I'm going to use a very common analogy and an example to explain API in a much easier way. Think of a situation in a restaurant. You're sitting down at the table and want to place an order for some food. You have a menu and the kitchen is ready to take your order and prepare the food that needs to be delivered to your table. Now what piece is missing here? The messenger is what's missing. We need somebody to take the order, bring it to the kitchen, then take the food that's prepared by the kitchen and deliver it back to us on the table. This messenger is the waiter and waiter is the API. Menu is the API specifications or the options and the kitchen is the service or software. API is a huge topic on its own and we can't cover everything in this series because this series is about PHP and not exactly about API. That being said though, I wanted to cover the basics about it because it will make it easier when you do need to learn more about APIs down the road, especially when you need to integrate with some of the public or private APIs. Now, when it comes to authentication, there are different ways we can authenticate with APIs. And that kind of depends on the API that you're trying to integrate with. Now, some APIs might just let you generate the token or API key directly from your account and then let you use that without the full OAuth authentication, or some may have different ways of authenticating their APIs. The tokens or API keys are usually sent within the requests via a header, or it can be sent as a request param, again, depending on the API. The API usually responds back with a certain status code and the response body. There are many status codes that API can respond with and each one can have its own definition. We covered HTTP headers and response codes in the second section of the course. So if you need a refresher on that, I'm going to leave the link to that lesson in the description and check it out. The response of an API request is usually in JSON format. Now, of course, it can be in different formats, but most common one is JSON. According to formal definition, JSON is an open standard file format and a data interchange format that uses human readable text to store and transmit data objects consisting of attribute value pairs and arrays. 
As I mentioned before, each API might have more steps involved when integrating with them. They might use different methods of authentication. They might return different status codes or the status codes that they return might have different messages and meanings. It might respond in a different format and so on. You would need to refer to the API specification and the documentation of whatever API you are integrating for more information and guidance on how to integrate with them. The reason why we talked about API and curl together is because we can use curl to make API requests. Now in most cases you probably will not need to use curl functions directly to integrate with APIs because most APIs come with some sort of SDK libraries and some even include PHP SDK library. Today we're going to do a quick API test with an email validation service to check if email is valid and deliverable or not. We're going to use emailable service for that. Note that this video is not sponsored by Emailable. I just liked their API and wanted to use that as an example. So let's go to the API docs and follow the instructions. As you can see within the introduction, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an account and generate our API key. Now I've already created an account with them behind the scene, so I'm just going to open my dashboard. Within the dashboard, we click on get started and here we can create our API key. We're going to make it a private key and then we can also list the trusted IP addresses if we wanted to limit access to only these IP addresses and we'll select test API key for this example because we don't want to waste our free credits using the live key when we are in the development process. So we'll click save and the API key has been generated. As you can see it even gives us a sample URL that we can use to test it in browser. The v1 slash verify is the endpoint or the route right here. Now as I mentioned before some APIs may do authentication differently and this is a great example of that. It does not require any complicated OAuth authentication. It does not require you to pass headers and so on. You're simply passing API key via getparam. Now let's open this URL in browser and as you can see it responded back with a JSON response containing the information. It contains the email that we passed, it contains some additional information and most importantly it gives us the status or the state whether the email is deliverable or not. In this case it's saying it's undeliverable but again we're using a test API so this data is not accurate and it's random. So if we refresh you see that it keeps changing it's just random data. Now we can copy this URL and paste it within our curl functions to make API requests from PHP. If we go back to the documentation and click on the email section here, which is the API documentation for the verify endpoint, we can see some snippets of code available on the right using curl. Now in addition to that, it also provides snippets of codes for some programming languages like Ruby, Node, and Python. Unfortunately, they do not have option for PHP, but that's not a problem because we can build it ourselves using curl. So what we can do is that we can copy this URL that we tested here and we can open the code and simply replace this URL with this and test it out. I'm going to get rid of this. Let's open the browser, refresh the page and making API requests might take a couple of seconds. And sure enough, it works and we got the JSON response. Now we can convert the JSON into an array. So we can do something like if content is not equal to false, we can create a data variable and call JSON decode and pass content here and then simply move these two lines above. Let's replace the content with data and let's refresh the page. And sure enough, it works. Now we can do a couple of improvements here because we don't want to keep our API keys directly hard coded here. We are using environment variables, so we can move this into an environment variable within our env file. So we'll create emailable API key and set it to that. And then we'll simply assign that to some API key variable. Let's grab that from the env super global and we'll also move the email out of here and we're going to hard code the email to email variable for now but this could be coming from a user input or from database or somewhere else. Let's refresh the page 
and sure enough everything is still working now as you can imagine there can be more parameters that you could pass here and building urls manually like this can be painful now instead of doing this we can use http build query function to build the query from the given array so we can do something like params equals to api key api key and then email email we can then take this and get rid of this whole thing here and simply call http build query and pass params let's refresh the page to make sure that it still works and sure enough it does now as i mentioned before we're not doing a full api coverage here and we're not doing a full integration with this api we're not doing things like error handling status code checks and so on but you get the basic idea of how to work with apis you would need to check the api documentation for more information on the request and response structures and so on if we go back to the documentation we can see more information right here we see that this is a get request to this endpoint. We can see the overall structure of the request and what parameters are required, what are optional and so on. We can see that email and API key parameters are required. Everything else are optional. If we scroll a little bit down, we can see the structure of the response. It includes all the attributes that it can return along with its type and description. As you can see, it also has another endpoint to verify batch of emails. So when you're working on APIs, expect it to have more than one endpoint, unless of course it just does one thing. And the API documentation should be enough to get you familiar and get you started integrating that API. As I mentioned before, some APIs provide the full SDKs, including the PHP SDKs, while some don't. And for the ones that don't, you could use curl yourself to make the API requests. Now, there are also other libraries that work with curl and provide additional functionality and features. One such library is Guzzle, which is a PHP HTTP client and follows PSR7 standards. PSR7 provides the common interfaces for HTTP messages that these frameworks or libraries try to use and follow so that it's easier for a developer to switch from one to the other. We're not going to cover Guzzle in this lesson, but I'll leave the link to the documentation if you want to know more. It's not complicated, if anything it makes easier to work with APIs. Alright, so this is it for this video. This should be enough to get you familiar and get you started with the APIs and curl in general. You can continue to learn more about APIs by taking other API specific courses and so on. But this should set some base foundation for that and it should make it easier for you to learn APIs in more detail. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this lesson, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. 